Bruh. Underdog has Devonta Freeman's receiving yardage total for tonight at nine and a half yards. They're playing against the Miami Dolphins. Latavius Murray is out. Devonta Freeman's the best running back in this backfield by a half marathon. Shout out to my man Danny Baker, who ran the NYC marathon last weekend. Devonta Freeman, nine and a half receiving yards over is the easiest gamble that you're going to make in this entire NFL season. So go check out underdogfantasy.com right now. The link for the app will be in the description down below. You want to bring home some revenue this year? This is how you do it. And if it's your first time depositing on there, when you use the promo code BDGE, they're going to match every dollar you put into it up to 100. $100, you'll get 200 in your account. 50, you'll get an extra 50. So you have 100 in your account. Put it all on Devonta Freeman over nine and a half receiving yards. Good guy. Bike to your regularly scheduled program. What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. BDG. Trade targets. Week 10. Coming in hot and heavy. Playoffs are around the corner, baby. They're around the corner. So we're going to talk about five guys that I think you should consider trading for, trading away, or just getting them affiliated with your brain at this point. Because since the playoffs are approaching, we need dubs now to get into the playoffs. But more importantly, you need to catch dubs while you're in the playoffs, right? In the midst of it. It's the most important thing. Okay, so we need to be thinking ahead at all, at all times. With that being said, it's time to tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. The first guy up on this list, and he might be obvious, he might not be obvious. I don't know. I feel like no matter what player you name, there are going to be pockets of people that look at that player in 75 different types of fucking daylight, all right? We're like New York. We get every single types of season. We get four seasons in a single day. That's how people probably look at Miles Gaskin, all right? Now, we know Malcolm Brown's out, right? He ain't coming by. Since Brown has been out, Gaskin has received 77% of the running back targets in Miami, as well as 74% of the running back carries in Miami. So we're looking at a 75% opportunity share for Miles Gaskin for the Dolphins. That is clear RB1 numbers, right? That, that type of opportunity volume, you don't see very often in today's NFL. There's always running back by committees. Two problems right now are the offensive line, right? The two problems that would hold you bike from actually pursuing a guy like Miles Gaskin. The offensive line, third worst per PFF in run blocking and to his health. When you look at Gaskin with two under center, he's averaged nearly five receptions per game, right? Not five targets, but five catches per game while Tua has been under center, all right? Now, they play Baltimore tonight, Thursday night football. I'd be very surprised if Tua ends up playing. Maybe I look like an idiot and he does play, but the fact that they came out and said on Monday that if there was a game that day, he wouldn't be playing tells me that he's probably not playing tonight, but he should be back after that, okay? And after Baltimore, Tua and the Miami Dolphins and Miles Gaskin get the Jets, the Panthers, the Giants, then they're by. And the Jets, the Saints are obviously a very tough defense. Then the Titans, really, really friendly matchups going forward, except for that Saints game. You look at volume plus good matchups. He's coming off a game where he just saw like 25 opportunities or some shit, right? He turned it into absolutely nothing somehow against the Texans. But that type of volume is going to lead to some really big explosion games. And again, when Tua comes back, a lot of the volume for Gaskin comes in the way of the passing game. That's easy yardage. It's easy points you rack up in any sort of PPR league. So I think Miles Gaskin right now, people who own him are, are, you know, they're sick of him, obviously. Good to see the touch game last week, but uh, hasn't put up production. And I think that's going to swing very, very quickly. So I'd be looking to throw some offers at Miles Gaskin if I could. Next guy, Kadarius Tony. This is just a, a, a gut eyeball feeling, man. Tony's upside, I feel like, over the rest of the season is crazy after their buy. I know there's another guy who has their buy still. After that, Tampa Bay, Philly, Miami, Chargers, Dallas, Philly, Chicago. Okay? So it's not necessarily great matchups, but Tampa Bay is a team that you pass the ball against a lot. Philadelphia, you could pass. Miami, you could pass. The Chargers, banged up on defense. Dallas, you can pass. Philly, you can, again, you could pass. They get them twice. Chicago is obviously tough, but depending on the health of their defense as well, that's a team that you could probably pass against too. Now, their offense is going to get better and better as they get healthier and healthier, but it just feels like Tony is the guy to me, man. Tony feels like the best playmaker without a doubt in this offense. He's coming off an absolute shit game, which is, you know, hence why he's a buy low guy. He had one target, but Daniel Jones attempted just 20 passes, all right? The leading wide receiver on the team, Kenny Galladay, saw two targets. So it's kind of a wash of a game, but we know Tony's ceiling and it's weak winning type shit, which I don't think Kenny Galladay has at this point. And also going back to that game, like you don't 
think about it, and this surprised me when I saw it, but I started looking at the Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Raiders defense. They're really good. They've been phenomenal this year, according to PFF at least. They are number one overall in pass rush and number four in coverage grade. Number 22 in run defense, which is why it became like a fucking Devontae Booker game and not a Daniel Jones game. So when you're looking at your, play, uh, your fantasy playoffs, man, you're playing against the best teams. You need ceiling. You need to hit basically two to three ceiling games in a row. You just need to get into the dance. And then once you're dancing, all you're doing is jumping and trying to hit that fucking ceiling. And that's what you're looking for. And Tony gives you that. We've got Gaskin. We've got Tony. And this third guy, I'm going to put my hood on because I know I'm about to take some flack for this. This third guy, I'm not necessarily dying to get rid of, all right? But I would start. Here's It's more of a strategy play here. Right? It's long-term shit. There's levels to this big brain type of trade that I'm about to lay out for you. Zeke, all right? You start to shop him right now but not with the intent of moving him right now. You kind of just say like, hey, you know, I see you're you're struggling at running back. That RB2 hole is gross. You're fucked in the playoffs if you don't have one. How do you feel about Zeke? You're not moving him right now because the next three games, Atlanta, Kansas City, and then, as I said, the Raiders, who are good pass, very good pass D, run funnel. They just lost an O-lineman, got a banged up knee. So you start to build up that interest in Zeke. People know he's on the table. People know you might want to move him. And you probably have a couple more weeks because the trade deadlines are probably moved back to like week 13, 14. So I do think you have a couple weeks right now before your trade deadline probably closes in your league. I would check that out. But you get the interest going because again, he has Atlanta, KC, Las Vegas. I could see some great matchups coming up. Then after those three games, he's at New Orleans, probably the tough, one of the toughest run defenses in the NFL, at Washington, at New York, Washington, Arizona. Now, I know you're like, Washington, New York, Arizona, not good defenses. Incorrect. New Orleans, on the road, very tough. At Washington, also very tough. Okay, they're, They've are they been way better against the run than most people realize. Right now, seventh best run defense per PFF, sixth fewest fantasy points allowed to the running back position this year. They are allowing 3.4 yards per carry to running backs. Just 3.75 receptions per game to running backs this year. That's not to the top running back. That is to the overall running back on a team, 3.75 receptions per game. And they play Washington twice. So that inside part of that defensive line for Washington, that's been so good for the last couple of years, is still very good this year against the run. They're just, their cornerbacks and their coverage and their safeties are fucking miserable. So New York Giants, obviously not a great defense. Arizona, eight fewest fantasy points allowed to the running backs. Just two touchdowns allowed all year on the ground to running backs. Actually, overall, running backs catching against them or rushing touchdowns too. That is tied for dead last in the NFL with Pittsburgh. All right. So that's, that's realistically, you start to put the interest in people's minds for Zeke. He has three easy matchups in a row. Even if maybe you want to go Atlanta, KC, then rip him off uh, before Las Vegas. And then he's got just a, a brutal, brutal slate of games in New Orleans, Washington, Giants, Washington, Arizona. Aaron Jones. Maybe you just do straight up Zeke for Aaron Jones if you can. All right. Because I feel like this has been a concoction of just like a bad, perfect storm for Aaron Jones, right? A few bad, like goal line goal line touches get kind of turned around or penalty calls or whatnot, right? He should have got in the end zone a couple more times. You have Aaron Rodgers missing a game. Jordan Love stinks, so obviously he's not going to have a good game. I feel like we're getting this perception of Aaron Jones like not being that good at fantasy anymore or not being reliable because A.J. Dillon's getting so many touches. But realistically, A.J. Dillon, yes, he's getting like 10, 11 carries a game. They're not very valuable. And I know he did have the four for 40 game, but again, that's what Jordan Love, he wasn't catching that many passes with Aaron Rodgers back in the fold. When Rodgers gets back in the fold, I expect Aaron Jones to go right back to being that mid to high end RB1 that he's been for us for the last couple years. Yes, it will be a committee, but Aaron Jones has always been in a committee. He was in a committee last year with Jamal Williams. He was in a committee with Jamal Williams the year before that as well. He's in a committee with Dylan now. Doesn't fucking matter for his upside because it's there when Rodgers is in the lineup and Rodgers will be bike. I would buy Aaron Jones if I could right now. The last guy up on this list that might be kind of obvious with the Chase Claypool news, news, but Chase Claypool is dealing with uh, turf toe, and that is something I want no part. Like, I'm in a 10-team uh, league. I'm in a 10-team league with Chase Claypool, the E-Town get down. I need my bench spots. I need to hit the waiver because I need to make moves right now, and Claypool is a guy that I'm probably going to end up dropping sooner rather than later. He's week to week. He's not going to play this week. I would be shocked if he plays within the next, like, three weeks. I think this is going to end up being, like, a long-term-ish playtime return, okay? And he's been terrible the last three weeks anyways since Juju's been down. Okay, they don't take shots down the field. Uh, he gets like five targets a game right now. Everything is dump offs to Najee Harris or to Deontay Johnson, which leads me to Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson right now is like the wide receiver 25 overall, but in points per game, he's, I think, the wide receiver 13 or 12. So he's basically a legitimate low end wide receiver one. With Claypool and Juju both out, every target is going to be going to Deontay Johnson, Firemuth, and Najee Harris. Okay, so I would pencil in, sharpie that shit in Deontay Johnson as 
an easy top 10, probably top eight fantasy wide receiver going forward. So trade for him as if you already know he's going top eight for the rest of the season. Beautiful schedule. So they get Detroit this week, the Chargers the week after that, Cincinnati, Baltimore pass funnel, Minnesota's pretty good, but Tennessee, Kansas City, and then Cleveland to end it all. Four out of the next seven matchups, five of the next seven matchups are super, super plus, and they're going to be Deontay Johnson, 12, 13, 14 target games. Go get Deontay Johnson right now. Go move like Mike Williams for Deontay Johnson or some bullshit like that. That's all I got for the trade targets today. Make sure you go check out Underdog Fantasy, all right? Go hit that Devonta Freeman over nine and a half receiving yards tonight. Good luck in week 10. I love y'all, and we'll see you tomorrow in Fade the Public. So make sure you subscribe to that channel. Peace. Ah! Ah! Hey!